Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sixth video in the three animation series. And today I want to discuss with you the, as you can read, the jump cycle. Now I was planning on doing a run cycle, but that took me so long that by the time I was done, you probably would have quit the video or went to bed or whatever. So I just want to focus on the jump cycle and later on I will walk through all the animations and talk to you about them. How I did them, but first I should focus on the jump cycle now the reason why i chose for doing a jump cycle because it's actually a little bit special because it's pretty much three animations into one and what i, what I mean with that uh, it's especially when you're developing for a video game it's actually really important so you have the start frame and the end frame right so this is the part where he's still on the ground uh, or the um, neutral pose everything here and then you have the anticipation move over here, and then you have the um, recovery pose over here, and then you have the actual airborne or mid-air pose over here. So we're going to treat these ones as all separate animations. So this one will be a separate animation, this is going to be a separate animation, and this is going to be a separate animation, at least in the game engine, right? We will make it in one single fluid animation, but when we're done, we're going to uh, chop it up into different segments. So we, so we can actually loop this part over here because we don't know how long the enemy or character will be in the air itself. Because you can imagine that if it's making a long jump, it's going to be airborne longer than it's going to make a short jump. When it's falling, for example, it's going to be even longer. So That's why I kind of want to have this part here to be able to loop. So we can just loop this as long as it needed. And when the character hits the ground again, we focus on the animation over here. So we'll do all of them, hopefully, and then we'll see how it goes. Um, so, we're first going to focus on the anticipation, then the looping part of the airborne part, and then the recovery part where the character gets back up again. So, it's the same character that we have done before, nothing changed. And how it works pretty much, it's actually really simple, so I'm going to do a very fast anticipation, because I don't want you guys wait too long for the actual animation to start. So, on 5, I'm going to hit the simple weight shift to this leg here, and then in frame 10, it's going to be airborne and the height i'm going to keep it fairly low here and then let's loop it here so on 20 is going to be the same and then on 25 is going to be back on the ground but lower than it actually started off with so you see anticipation jump and then we go down here this is the recovery part here and then we want to go back to the original dance over here of course this is really, really fast so i might want to shift a little bit especially this part of here but then again it might it actually looks not that bad but let's shift this one a little bit to the recovery itself to like 40 here for a second i mean this part has to be fast right where you actually hit the ground because you know gravity then this part here then this yeah recovery is fine okay so the reason why I'm shifting this, uh, the weight on this foot here, because I kind of, well, just keep in mind, right, the character is still in motion when you actually jump. It's still moving forward, right? So I kind of want to move the weight on this foot over here. So we can actually jump up from this foot. And then we go airborne. Then we go down again. But shifting, jumping, etc. A couple of things you have to keep in mind, right? The, this foot should be on the ground as long as you possibly can. So from uh, 5 to 10, it's going to be on the ground till 8 even. So I'm going to add a keyframe here. And I'm going to add the foot roll. So it's actually still a little bit bent. They should not have foot roll here on 5. There we go. So it's going to stay on the ground as long as possible. And then it's going to actually release on 10. So the, on 10, the foot will actually be off the ground and this foot over here is going to be a little bit earlier of course because it doesn't have any uh, weight on it so you can actually go pretty fast still here on the ground on the ground on the ground so i'm going to add foot roll here but so still a little bit bent here and then on eight it's going to be released then it's going to be up so i'm going to do it right now actually up in the air still be on the ground so you should not move and then it also not rotate this stage and then release there you go okay, with this foot here on 10 or 9 in this case it should be released from the ground 
I'm gonna do a similar here, I'm gonna raise it as well. Just just a little bit for now. See what this foot leaves the ground a fraction earlier than the other foot. Then at least you get nice motion here. Continuous motion. Of course this foot should move back in uh, on 10. It should actually move a little bit more here. And also maybe a little bit more forward so you get a little bit more interesting pose here. Of course it's now gonna shift here. That's annoying as hell. Just gonna do this real fast so I can add a keyframe here for all frames and then on eight on ten, sorry, I'm gonna move it a little bit more forward. Make a little bit more interesting stance for the actual foot and also maybe like fix the knee twist. There we go, even even a little bit more here. There you go. Perfect. So I'm gonna keep copy some frames here. So on 10 is released. So this 10 till 20 is the actual airborne cycle. And then on 25, the feet should be back on the ground on, in its original pose, like here. Same for this one. On 20, I'm gonna add a keyframe again. 25, it's gonna be on the ground again. It's uh, in its original pose, and then we get the re recovery. The X motion here is too fast. As you can see why it just snaps. Don't want to do that. So I'm going to fix it with the actual animation curve here. I'm going to go to my X. Right now it's here, right? So I kind of want to move a little bit, like maybe to 12. Maybe add a little bit more interesting curve here as well. So it actually, like, it actually keeps moving. That's better. Maybe also maybe a little bit more rotation here. Same thing here on 10. I'm going to copy paste, copy paste this frame again on 220 so it's exact, exactly the same. Otherwise, it's not going to loop. I, I want it to loop. Of course, we're going to check that later on if it actually loops, but I think it will. I think we can even make the pelvis anticipation a little bit more even, like a little bit lower, a little bit more extreme. It should still be a little bit more on the Z here. Just gonna move it a little bit to the same as the other one so it doesn't move back while he's floating in the air. Same value here for set on 20 so it actually still loops properly okay pretty okay the legs pretty okay this foot here is really boring so i'm going to fix it we also a little bit more here a little bit more rotation And again, paste the frames here so it is exactly the same. Probably want to do the same thing here on X as well. So I just want to keep them a little bit more fluid. So this, by like this, again, the plateau. Kind of want to not have one. So I'm going to make it a little bit more fluid here. If I can actually move it, thank you. Maybe same thing here as well on the Y. Again, kind of want, don't want to see plateaus here. This is fine. But now you can see that there's going to be a slight movement here on the X and NZ. So it does a little bit more of uh, organic movement here. I'm going to do the same thing here for Y actually. But it, just, it just keeps moving, right? So it just keeps moving. It's okay. Let's check out the actual looping here. So I think. It's not gonna loop brilliantly, but we'll find out. Not at all, as you can see, right? Even though it should. So on 10 and 20, they're not the same. I'm gonna add a keyframe here and then paste it. Paste. This is the motion what it will do in the air. As you can see, it's way too much. 
So we need to fix it, but that's just the curve issue again. So this is oh, that's interesting. So on ten, yeah, okay. A little bit less, maybe. Oh, come on. It was not as rigid. Still, a lot. Self is also doing something weird here. I'm gonna do the same thing as, and then copy paste it to twenty. Same frames. <laughs> Looks really weird though, with the feet on the ground, feet on, up in the air. Even a little bit more. Let me just hit this button over here. Oh no, too much. This is also be a little bit less. That's better, right? But the Y movement here is strange. I'm gonna fix that as well. So I have a quick look here. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna add a keyframe here, so that means I can now adjust these again. They will look properly. And there's still a, a little bit of motion in here. Just a little bit. Now that looks fine as well. Okay, so let's go back to the original one. So 1800 till 1840, that's enough. Let's save, of course. I've had my crash way too many times. Okay, so this is the anticipation. Anticipation. This is the contact pose or contact jump. And then you have the mid air. You have the fall contact. You have the recovery. And then you have the neutral pose again. Of course, you also want to see a little bit more though in the arms. I'm going to fix the arms right now. Maybe we can do a little bit more interesting stuff with them as well. So right now on five, this is the anticipation pose done. I'm gonna go to four, so it it sorts it ends a little bit earlier, so I can actually start on a new and next animation a little bit sooner. And for this one, this is actually kind of cool. I'm gonna move a little bit here. We're gonna move back, and then on seven, maybe let's do eight. I kind of want to have this anticipation to be done of the arms. Same thing here. You kind of want to be careful though, that you don't make it too cartoony in this stage. Um, you can go really hardcore and have the arms uh, like completely stretched. Like ignore that cloth issue. I don't know why it's doing that. That's really annoying me. The fuck? And it's normal again. So anticipation. Yeah, see now the arms are really not interesting. So I have to do the same thing here on 10. And up. This is a weird motion here as well. This motion here is fine. It, it looks off because we did F add and keyframes in between. So what if I turn on step preview? Makes a little bit more sense. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a really boring pose though, so I'm gonna see if I can do it a little bit differently. A little bit more interesting. A little bit wider since he's jumping, you know. That actually is not bad. That works okay. Check it out real fast again. Now, I kind of want to have these ones move a little bit up on 12, so that this motion is still happening. Then I'm going to copy paste them again from 10 to 20. It's walking. I don't know why it's walking. Oh, I should probably hit S again. 20. Thank you. So this is too much, right? You can see this is too much. There's a really harsh animation happening. Not for now. I'm gonna leave them. So this is the falling motion, right? So this is actually okay. So you kind of want to have the arms. Oof, that's not okay though. The arms, um, they re react to the motion of the entire body in this case. Um, so it should always be a little bit later. 
and the actual body itself. And it can be a couple of frames later. It doesn't have to be like 10 or 15, but a little bit later. Okay, so I'm going to go for 3 frames later. So when it's sort of falling down, the arms also spread out a little bit, maybe a little bit too much though. Let's have a look. And they flay a little bit, and then on 28, I want them to be in the recovery pose. So this is the part where you can actually add a lot of weight to your character. That's what that's what we're gonna do as well. See, because the pelvis stops at, at 25, right? But then the arms are, are later, so that actually adds weight. We get a lot of weight from it. And now 40, this should be in, in their original pose again. Might be a little, I actually want to shift it a little later even, like 29 maybe. A little bit higher though, especially this, the left arm is okay, this one is a little bit weird, in my opinion. That looks better. Okay, this is okay for now, but we also need to do the entire spine, right? So nothing is happening so far with the spine, it's just standing there looking pretty. We need to add something, right? So in the anticipation, you would expect that the entire spine moves a little, bends a little bit forward, right? So this anticipation here, it ends on 5. So I'm going to do here on 5 that it actually moves a little bit forward, entire spine. I want to move a, bit, a little bit of rotation here. Like this. So it actually bends forward. That actually adds to the anticipation. And then on 10, I just want to be okay on in its original position-ish. There we go. Let's have a look. It bends forward. That's nice. Then it moves up. And the arms are doing something really weird right now. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. I'm going to, uh, going to paste them here. I'm going to hit S so I could give them all attributes. And on 20 again, I'm going to paste them real fast. There you go. And on 40, we should have the original pose again. So especially on the recovery part, right, the spine should react very heavily because, I mean, the character has weight, right? So on 25, the contact point hits. So I kind of want to be more. So right now I'm just going to add like a keyframe here. Maybe like a little bit. I'm going to bend it a little bit. Just a smidge. And then I'm going to add more frames here a little bit later. So on 29 here, I'm going to bend the spine way forward. So it actually um, responds to the gravity, so it hits it, then on 25, then it follows through, and then it goes back to the original position here. But this adds weight again to the character, right? You can see it actually works really well. But it's way later. The, now you can also see that the arms seem to be later as well, because now they, they are at the same time as the spine, but again, the arms um, should be later, because it's based on hierarchy, so you first have these pelvis that, that reacts, then you have the spines that react in order, when the spines are done with the animation, then the arms should actually follow. But they should be uh, one frame later, maybe even two frames. I'm just going to try one frame. The spine here is done, and then the arms still respond as well to the actual spine move. Now you can see it now it's really nice and fluid. There's this um, movement that's constantly happening. It's really nice. All you need to do is for the neck. But that's even later, right? So it's, it should be the same, roughly at the same time as the actual spine is. So I'm going to do the same thing here on 23. I'm on 20. But this is the part where we start falling. Then the neck should be actually moving back, right? So it, it, it actually um, reacts to the downward motion. Still does, still does. And then here it should actually start reacting to the actual uh, contact. In this case, so I'm going to move it down. Now you get this nice head pop here. Um, I think this is really nice. I'm maybe I'm gonna do a little one frame later. That's nice. So 
the pelvis again is done on, at 25 and then you actually have the spines reacting towards to the actual contact point so they're done at 29 all of them and then the hands are done at 30 so that's a little bit later and even the neck is even later now you can also do the head here as well that'd be kind of cool. i'm going to do that now as well and that should be even be later right again so it's based on hierarchy so i'm going to add a frame here on 23 again same thing here uh, i'm going to add one on 28 and then 32 i'm going to move the head down a little bit okay so you have this almost like a chain of motion happening but it's actually important that you um, spread them out. So one is done at 28, one 29, 30, 31. Um, otherwise, it's going to look very robotic that everything is done at the exactly same time. That's not how a body works. So you want to avoid that. I want to fix the hands though. That's really doing my head in. It's really awful. <laughs> this looks so fucking stupid. Okay, this is a Y movement issue. I'm going to go to my Y here. Yeah, it's definitely this part of here. I'm gonna oof those are weird ass curves as well. This one is I'm just gonna move this one a little bit down. This one I'm gonna fix it. There you go. Still way too much. Kinda zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna move it even further down and left wrist. Well, way down here. So it's actually a subtle motion instead of like this really harsh. That's a little bit better. <laughs> Still looks weird, but we'll get to that. This pose is. <laughs> Also really weird. Okay, I kind of want to fix the legs now. Uh, so when you fall, right, um, or when you jump, your legs they don't um, bend when you go down, right? They should actually be almost on the ground. Let's see if we can actually do it on the ground. There we can. Again, the left foot here should be on the ground first, since this is or actually your weight, right? Or weight is on this foot, so that should be on the ground first. Also no rotation. So this is on the ground first and then the other foot hits as well. But I kind of want to be on the ground here at 24. So I'm going to do a sim here as well. So then we have no rotation. We're going to add some foot roll. Just to add a little bit more of like actual weight. So it hits it here. It should not be foot roll here, here, here or here. Zero. And then here it hits it. It's ground and then it flattens on the ground. It's pretty good. So the motion of the pelvis, let's go here on the y-axis, right? It should now it should actually fall, and right now it's not falling. It just does an ease in and ease out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break the curve here. I'm gonna make it a little bit more like this. So it, it, it picks up speed and then hits it real hard on the ground. So it also adds weight a little again. You can see why it's floating from the floor and then it just smashes on the ground with a lot, a lot more weight. And that actually works really well. Same for the feet, though we have to do the same thing here. So I'm gonna do the same thing here on this part. I'm gonna break a tangent. Similar thing here, there we go. And then it, just, it hits the ground with force. And same for the other foot as well, of course. Again, Y axis. Break the engine. Come on. There you go. Okay. So now we just have to make the actual jump look interesting. <laughs> uh, the the mid air. This is okay. This is okay. We need to fix the animations here though, but it's fine. I could I could do it later on. Not weird or interesting. Let's fix this pose over here, right? This is really awkward. Same for this one here. I don't know why it's doing like this. 
This makes sense, right? So a little bit more like this. That's kind of cool. And then this here should be zero. Oh, almost zero. So the anticipation post looks, this looks really cool. This is really nice actually. Uh, this, this might be a little bit weird here. Oh, it's just bad posing. This kills the, the kills pretty much everything. So I'm going to move a little bit to the right, left, right. This is a cool anticipation pose. And we just have to make this look interesting, which is more difficult than it actually sounds. How to make a character look interesting that's floating in the air. Oh, the spine is doing some weird stuff here. Just. This makes sense though, because I, I I still need to raise the clavicles, raise the clavicles. That's why this looks really stuff and really stupid. Okay. I also want to fix. What if maybe I'll just do this first? So I'm gonna do the head, the neck in this case, because I also kind of want this one to bend as well. Again, I'm gonna do one frame later, and everything else. So while the, um, the body is moving towards the actual jump itself, the head is still in a motion of going down. Then 10 here should be in the proper position here. Maybe we can also add a little bit of animation here as well. Like a really subtle one. Maybe Y a little bit so it looks at the camera. Make sure I paste this one correctly because it's probably different. It is. Probably too much though, but we'll have to look. I mean, we're actually looping this part here. And the, the landing part is, is really nice, and the space part is pretty good as well. Except for the actual jumping. I mean, the motion of the arms here is really bad. This looks really stiff. Let's focus on this part first. So, maybe what if. Yeah, like a really subtle rotation here. Like a little bit like, like this. Really subtle. That'll probably work. A little bit actually now let's do on hmm this work let's actually focus on the oh looping part let's see if it still loops it loops now it's yeah but this is when he's airborne right let's keep that in mind it's not bad though i expect it worse just the hands especially on the z axis doing it's too much, right? It's too extreme, so it just looks like it's, it's like noise almost. Let's fix it here as well. So this one here, I'm gonna move it down a little bit. Oh, actually a lot. Just to make everything a little bit more. See, this is better. Maybe even more subtle. Right? So let's go here. I'm just looking at this on this hand here on the other one. Let's check the other one curves as well. So this is the hmm. A little less here as well. And on X is anything happening here? Not at all. Gonna make it flat. I'm just gonna add a keyframe here in between. I could just play with a little bit. So actually a little bit of motion on the on the X. This is okay, right? But the pose itself is not interesting, so maybe if I do it a little bit more like this. That's gonna be super extreme. That's a little bit better. Maybe a little bit of a hand rotation here will be kinda cool. Whoa, it's way too much. That's better. Okay, let's do this one. Same thing here, let's have a look at the curves. Way too much, of course. Come on. Down. 
is okay, but this one is pretty fucked up. Let's make it less. And nothing on X. It's kind of weird that this one is, is moving and the other ones aren't, so I'm going to do that as well. So here on the X, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this a little bit more subtle and then I'm going to move the other ones as well. Like a little bit here on X. i to make sure that I keyframes everything. There, there they are. Little bit of motion here. I'm going to fix them later on, make them less subtle, a little bit more subtle. Okay. Have a look. Mm, too much. And that one. Okay. That should do it. Okay. Yeah, this is okay. For 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 like an airborne, we can make it more extreme if you want to. Like we can actually raise those legs by a lot. We can go here, maybe like go up like this. Then you get, I don't know what you're gonna get, probably like re motion. Yeah, we don't wanna do that though, but I mean, I don't wanna make it like almost cartoony, so I, I don't do this. But you can, right? You can actually make it more extreme by pushing up the legs, by making it a little bit more, um, yeah, cartoony. Okay, let's go back here. Let's go back to 800. This is pretty okay animation. It's not done yet, of course. We need to do a lot more polishing here. Especially on the arms, like this part of here. You can see the motion happening here. This is weird, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't expect this motion. You probably had expect a little bit more like this, for example. You get a little bit more forward motion here. This should be a lot lower. And a little bit less elbow PV again, and then you get the actual motion here. That's better. They should be higher. You get, you get an actual curve happening here, and then, yeah. But I'll just do that in, without this video, otherwise it's gonna be really boring. Oh, the head snaps. Ooh, I didn't see that. Let's check out the last frames here. Ooh, I did not do that. And this bad boy as well. Now everything loops. You can float. Let's check the actual landing. That's solid. What I'm also gonna do uh, is fix the clavicles here because they're not raised at any point. They're not doing. They're static at right now, which is causing a lot of issues as well, especially on the down pose here. But this should be way up. But I'll just do that some other time. Um, next video we're actually gonna do unity so we're gonna export everything I'm gonna show you how to export everything set everything up in unity and then we're gonna start on the animator and setting everything up and chopping up the animation so um up to see you soon probably next week ish well depends when you watch the video but soon okay so i'll see you next time